Hi guys, in this video, I'm going to unbox the Xiaomi Mi 8. As we can see, this is a black color box and the design is very simple. We have a Xiaomi Mi 8 on both sides of the box and on top is already big 8 characters. And there is some highlight of the specification at the back like the AI tele zoom dual camera and also the front facing camera with 20 megapixel and also infrared facial recognition. And it is using Qualcomm Snapdragon 845 processor. And one of the biggest highlights is here the first phone in the world with dual GPS module. And here saying what are included in the box. And we can see that this is a Mi 8 in black color, 6GB RAM and 64GB ROM. And now let's open it. And once I unbox it, I can see that it's another small box with some slogan on top of it saying Tan Shou Hei Ke Ji, Xiaomi Wei Fa Shao Er Sheng. Now let's check out what's inside the box. First thing we can see is the user manual in Chinese because this is a Chinese set as the global set I haven't launched yet. And then we have the warranty card. And as usual, we get a card slot pin together with the USB Type-C to earphone jack cable. Now this indicate that this phone do not have earphone jack. And we also get a TPU soft case. Although this phone is in black color, but I get a clear soft case. And this case is very flexible. Now here we get the Xiaomi Mi 8 in black. The very obvious change is on top, it's a very big notch. You can see a lot of sensor. And at the back uh, here, the sticker saying that it will support 2 nano SIM. And here is the USB Type-C cable and also the travel adapter and the output is 5V at 3N, 9V at 2N and 12V at 1.5N. This output power looks like it is a QC 2.0 but on Xiaomi official web page saying that this adapter support the QC 3.0. On the web page also saying that the Xiaomi Mi 8 support the QC 4.0 plus but you will need to get a third party adapter that support QC 4.0 plus in order to enjoy the QC 4.0 plus on Xiaomi Mi 8. While waiting for the phone to put up, we unpeel all the protected film. Now we can see the glass back is very clear and shiny. At the front is the Samsung AMOLED screen. On top of the phone, we can see the antenna on both sides of the phone and also the secondary microphone. On the right hand side of the phone, we can see the volume blocker and power button. At the bottom, there is a microphone, USB Type-C port and a loudspeaker and the antenna on both sides. While moving further to the left of the phone, we can see the curved design of the body. And then the card slot on the left of the phone. The card slot will support two nano SIM card, but there is no place for the micro SD card. The back cameras are both 12 megapixel, where the wide angle come in f1.8 aperture and the telephoto come in f2.4 aperture. The flash is dual tone LED flash, and we also get to see the fingerprint sensor. Moving to the bottom, we can see the Mi logo. On the front is the 6.21 inch 1080p resolution Samsung AMOLED display. On top is a very big notch which make out the space for the 20 megapixel camera, proximity sensor, speaker, notification LED, infrared cameras and also infrared LED for the facial recognition. Now we have Mi 8 and Redmi Note 5. Both automatic brightness is turned off and the screen brightness to the highest level. 
one with the Samsung AMOLED display and the other one is LCD display. Both are playing the same video on YouTube and we get to see the difference between the display. I personally do like the Samsung AMOLED display. With the AMOLED display, Mi 8 is able to support the always on display, but it is turned off by default. So we have to go in to turn it on, the always on display. And we also allow to schedule when should the always on display be enabled. Let's enable the always on display and try it out. Not only the time and date, we also get to see the notification icon if there is any. On the display option, we also get to enable the double tap screen to wake and also the pickup gesture to wake. Now we enable it and try it out. Now let's double tap the screen. Let's wake up. Now let's pick up the phone and the screen wake up. On the full screen display setting, we also get a full screen display gesture which is something like the iPhone. Once I choose it, there is a guide that showing me how to use it, like swipe up to go to the home screen, and also swipe from the bottom and post to go to the recent, and also swiping from left or from right to go back. But I personally don't like this gesture. I don't find it convenient. I still prefer the buttons. And over here, we also have the option to hide the screen notch. Let's enable it. Then we can see the screen area turn into black color. Now let me add the face data so that I can unlock the phone with my face. Xiaomi have improved the facial recognition on Mi 8. It will not unlock the phone if it is not a real face from the real person. With the infrared cameras and infrared LED, you can now unlock your phone with your face even in the very dark environment. Now let's register my face. It is so fast. By this, I already registered my face. There is an option to allow the face unlock whenever the screen light up, which including the incoming notification. But this may drain the battery faster. Now that I've registered my face, let's try out the facial unlock. Wake up the phone and turn it to my face. The phone unlock instantly. Let's try again. It's very fast. Xiaomi also introduced their voice assistant, Xiao Ai. So now that I have to register my voice. Xiao Ai, Xiao Ai, Xiao Ai. Xiao Ai only available in Mandarin at the moment. Hopefully, there will be an English version in future. There is only a limited task that Xiao Ai can do. So let's see how well does it perform. Xiao Ai, teacher. Give me the alarm. You want to set the time? For example. 每天早上七点三十分。好的，帮你定好了，明天上午七点半的闹钟。Aside from what I have mentioned earlier, these are the specs that you should know. Mi 8 will come in 6 GB RAM with the option of 64 GB, 128 GB, and 256 GB ROM. And the processor is Qualcomm Snapdragon 845. Mi 8 is the first phone in the world with dual GPS module. The battery capacity is 3400 mAh. Mi 8 support Qualcomm Quick Charge 4.0 Plus. It also support Bluetooth 5.0 with wider coverage and faster transmitting. The AI Studio Lighting camera mode is not available now, but it will come with a future update. As for the game performance, I turned the graphic to the highest level and also choosing the higher frame rate. And let's see the result. The graphic is very smooth and the frame rate remained around 60 frames per second.
As for the dual GPS module, I still can't see any major improvement for this, mainly because we don't really need that kind of accuracy. But uh, this definitely will burn out your battery faster. Now let's check out the camera with 206 AI scenes recognition, but let's start with a quick camera test. We will talk about the AI later on. Now we launch the portrait mode and shooting a Xiaomi Mi 8 box and switch to the normal mode and now we can zoom in and let's see the result you can see the normal mode uh, the background is very clear we can see the words behind but if we switch to the portrait mode we can see the background is being blurred out but the edge of the Mi 8 box is still very sharp and this is the result this is a portrait mode And this is a normal mode by two times zooming in. Here we have the Samsung S9 Plus portrait mode. We can see the background is blur, but it's quite natural. Compared with the Mi 8, we can see the background blur effect is quite unnatural. But that is my personal preference. Maybe you guys would love the Mi 8 portrait mode more than the S9 Plus. In the camera option, that is a manual mode, which allow us to select the white balance the focus point, the shutter speed, the iOS, and also select the lenses in between the wide angle and also the telephoto. And the square mode. Then of course the portrait, which we have just tested and the normal mode and now the video mode and also the short video mode we are allowed to turn on the LED torch while shooting video same thing to the photo mode we are allowed to turn on the torch while shooting a photo now let's check out the front facing camera we have the HDR mode but there is no front facing LED And we also can choose the portrait mode which will blur out the background and the foreground. This will auto focus on your face no matter where you point the focus point to. This will allow you to choose the preferable exposure point but still focusing on your face. Now let's test out the portrait mode and the normal mode. Now I'm switching in between the normal mode and the portrait mode. You can see the transition is a little bit slow. Now let's take one in the normal mode and switch to the portrait mode and snap another one. And let's go and check out the result. This is the normal mode. We can see the background and also the foreground are both very clear. We can even see the reflection on the phone. This is the portrait mode. You can see the background and foreground are being blurred out but the details on my face are still being retained. Now let's test the rear camera in outdoor with backlit condition. You can see the background is very bright and my face is very dark. When I turn on the camera torch, we can see my face is brighter now, but I'm also losing a lot of details on the background, especially the sky. When I turn on the HDR mode, you can see a lot of details on my face and also the details on the houses behind me, but we still lacking a lot of details on the sky. And next is the AI mode. It was supposed to detect that is the face on the picture, so it make my face brighter. Other than that, I don't see anything different from the HDR mode. And when I put the photos side by side, you can see there is really not much different in between the HDR and the AI mode. Now here is another rear camera photo. We can see it captured very well on the background even after the sunset. And this is for you to compare if I switch it to the portrait mode. The portrait mode bring my face a lot closer to the camera. We can see the background is being blurred out, but the edges on my hair, my face, my neck and my shoulder are still very sharp. And now when I put the photos side by side, you can see that the background is really blurred out on the portrait mode. And also the skin on the portrait mode is much smoother. But the colors is much warmer on the default mode and also it's much sharper on the default mode. Mi 8 has two cameras, one with the wide angle lens and the other one with the telephoto lens. 
and when we choose the telephoto lens, it's zooming two times compared with the wide angle lens. And here is another photo with the wide angle lens. And then we switch to the telephoto lens. You can see it's zooming a lot. And here we have the photo with the default mode, HDR mode, and also the AI mode. You can see the details on the HDR mode is much better and also the color on the AI mode is also much saturated. The Xiaomi Mi 8 comes in with the camera that can recognize 206 AI scenes. So let's compare when the AI is off. And when I turn on the AI scenes recognition, it recognizes this is a sunset so it makes the photo looks much warmer. Here is another photo with AI recognition off, but it's already showing such a good photo with good lighting and also the colors. And when I turn on the AI scenes recognition, it recognizes this photo with a lot of buildings, so it makes the buildings much sharper, and it also makes the colors much saturated, especially the skies, I really like it a lot. Here we have the photos for Mi 8 and S9 Plus. We can see the Mi 8 with AI mode on, the color is so much better than the S9 Plus. But if we look closer, we can see a lot of details being captured on the S9 Plus compared with the Mi 8. And here we have the food photo with the AI sense recognition being turned off. Just so we can compare when it turned on this AI sense recognition, it makes the photo much brighter and also the color is slightly warmer. Let's start the selfie camera with the beauty mode turned off so we can see the original image. When I turn off the beauty mode, we can see the face is very rough. And also my eyes is not that bright. So that we can turn on the beauty mode and we can compare what the beauty mode does to my face. And you can see my face is very smooth now and my eyes is look much brighter. And this round there is something called the remodeling mode. Just so to see the result, I turn everything to the maximum level so that you can see my face is slimmer, my eye is bigger, and my nose is much sharper. Let's take a look at the result. Oh my god, you can see my eyes is so big and my face looks so much slimmer now. This is something like the plastic surgery. I'm not sure your friend will still recognize you from the Facebook and your real person. Let's not forget the HDR mode. This is good when you shoot the photo with the backlit condition. Let's check out the photo. You can see the details on the background is being bring out. And then the portrait mode. This will blur out the background. You can see the background is very blur, but the edges on my body is still very sharp. But the problem is that my face looks darker in this portrait mode. And when I put the photo side by side, you can see each function provide different result. Especially the one in the middle is the remodeling mode in maximum level. You can see my face is slimmer, my eyes are sharper, and my lips are thicker. The selfie cameras work very well in low light condition. Even in portrait mode, the bokeh effect is excellent. I like it a lot. And if we shoot in very low light condition, we can see the white noise is minimal. The rear camera video recording is excellent. It works very fine in the dynamic range of light source. It even allows you to shoot in 4K video format. And it's also working very well on the night mode. The noise is minimal. It also allows you to shoot the slow motion video. Let me show you the 30 frames per second normal speed video. And we switch to the 120 frames per second video. Then it also allows you to shoot in 240 frames per second, very slow video. And when we compare with the Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus, the slow motion is really good on S9 Plus, but it only has one option and also shooting in 720p resolution. The front facing camera recording mode is excellent because it captures my face even in backlit condition. As of now, the any emoji is still not available, so I couldn't test it for you. But Xiaomi never provide any information about the waterproof level of this phone. There is no such information on the official website. But overall, this phone is very good for the budget and it provides everything that you need. And that's it. I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.